Blog Talk Radio. Good morning, everybody. Oh, my God, it's morning and I'm doing a show. If any of you know me, you already know that I never do a show in the morning. So this must mean or be significant to the fact that I have someone special on my show today. If you've been watching my page the last day or two, you already know who's coming on the show today. Angela. I would prefer to call her Angela instead of Big Ange, but I guess we'll ask the boss herself when she comes on the air what she prefers to be called. So I first off want to say thank you so much to the many people that are taking their time to listen to the show today. If any of you happen to not notice the wall this morning, you'll see that I made a notation that after I'm finished with Big Ange, I'm going to be giving in a fill in a couple of different things. The female biker documentary that I'm going to be working on, um, that I'm casting for right now. A lot of people have been asking about the condition of my son and his current um, situation, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to cover a little bit about the Hoda experience yesterday because I had been tipped off as to what happened on the Today Show yesterday. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, And then, of course, my, my venture to the House of Mercy, which is the homeless shelter in Rochester, New York that uh, I'm collecting donations for. And I don't want to forget to mention that. If any of you happen to have anything, whether you're local or whether you happen to be in New York City and you want to donate something, um, get a hold of me. Either email me at cin4251 at gmail.com. Otherwise, you can go ahead and uh, Facebook me. Obviously, most of you are friends on Facebook with me, so you can get a hold of me and let me know. As far as I know, they are accepting donations of women's clothing, men's clothing, and toys, to the best of my knowledge. So um, if you have anything like that that you want to donate, they'll take it as long as it's in decent condition. Apparently, I I guess there's some criteria for some of the toys or whatever have you, like I think it's dolls or something. I'll find out for sure um, to be able to specify uh, exactly what they take and what they don't take. And then um, I'll talk to Ashley and I'll post that up for you. Um, and like I said, my goal is exactly 50 boxes, if I'm not mistaken. So um, see what you can do to help me out. Okay, I guess it's time to get our guest on the air because you don't want to listen to me. You want to listen to Angela. So without further ado, let's start talking. Good morning, Angela. Hello. How Hello, are you? <laughs> it's you. You're here. You're in my little studio. Thank you so much for coming in or coming on. I'm okay this morning. How are you? I'm good. Good. I have lots of questions for you. Um, Good questions, I hope. Okay. Um, Okay. Let's start off. Let's go off and let's start going. Um, To most people that know you, you're a Brooklyn baby by birth. Um, So I'm sure that our listeners want to hear of kind of the backstory of our beloved Ange, because maybe if you want to chronicle for us how you went from being a young woman um, with kind of an undefined career plan to the mogul that you are today. Well, I was just a mother with two kids. Had a grandson working in a bar. When they came and approached me, I would like to try out for my wife. So I said, okay, let's try it. I don't think it's for me. I'm not good with cameras. So they said, all right, just try it for six episodes. So I said, all right, let's try it. So I drink a shot, a few shots of Jameson, and I try it. (laughs) I was nervous. Okay. Okay. So I try it out. From the six episodes, it went to 17 to two spinoffs for four seasons now, and it's just been blown up. Oh, definitely. There isn't a person that doesn't recognize you. I'm sure you know that. Everybody recognizes you. And it's it's not just your look. It's it's you. It's you as a person. You're very distinctive, in case you don't know that. <laughs> you know, I've been in the bar business for 35 years. So, you know, mm-hmm. to, be in, to be in the bar business that long, you have to have that personality because they don't want a stale person. You know, you have to be, right. you know, listen to everybody funny, go along with it. Of course. So I, guess I understand. I, I'm like that. I'm like that. Oh, very much. Very, very much so. Actually. I have, and we're going to get into the I bar side no, later, but go ahead. I have no enemies. Everybody always loved me my whole life. I was born, still born up and raised in Brooklyn. I moved to Staten Island 10 years ago. And I'm still a Brooklyn girl because I'm there all the time. Yes. Yeah. My, my son still lives in Brooklyn. So. I got you. Yep. In fact, we're just moving right along to your son, in fact. Uh, actually, each and every viewer of VH1 Mob Wives, which, of course, the show you're on, for those that may not know, I doubt that there's anyone that doesn't know that, but obviously we get to watch um, 
your son as far as some of the painful and the proud moments he's had in his life. Um, so again, I'm sure that the fans are concerned about his current capacity and where he's at. So can you kind of tell us, give us an update about your son and what's going on with him? Okay, my son AJ, he'll be 26 in March. He has he currently has a 10-month-old daughter, and he's having a son in April. He's doing very good. Two babies. He's doing great. I'm very proud of him. He's had a long struggle with this drug addiction. Sure. And it seems like it's an epidemic out in Brooklyn and Staten Island. So many kids his Absolutely. age and younger are on these pills. Goodness. But, and I have to ask you. Know, it's a hard... Yeah. And, of course, as we're watching him and looking at this, and I'm thinking to myself, I had just heard about that, how he's having another baby. And I know you, I had seen on the show, of course, that you had advised him to move back in. So are they living with you now, or have they moved out? No, he doesn't live with me. He has his own apartment. He's had it since he was 21, downstairs from his father's house. And I keep begging him to come live with me. But he's like, ma. I have two, two babies. I ain't living with my mother. You don't want to hear it. I understand. But I, I, will, I, I will convince him. I will convince him. Do you think so? Really? I, I would like him to do it until he's really on his feet a little better. Sure. Just so I can keep an eye on him a little bit. I like watching it. And I've seen you and your pictures with your grandbabies, and I have to say, isn't it darling? And I'm sure the listeners will agree. Oh, my God. You look so cute with those pictures with those babies. It's adorable. They are the cutest things. Now I'm having another one within two weeks. My daughter's having a baby boy, too. (gasps) Oh, my gosh. I didn't know that. Congratulations. That's wonderful. I'm going to have five. Oh, my God. (laughs) That household of yours. Goodness. Three boys and two girls. Gotcha. Now, I wanted to ask you, of course, now, obviously, with your uh, son being a father, I'm sure it's probably in the beginning a little sensational and scary for him. So has he ever gravitated towards you and asked you for guidance or advice or said, hey, Ma, what do I do about this or that? Yes. I, he always asks me what he should do about things. And I always try to give oh. him the best advice that I can. I says, AJ, it's going to be a long road. Every day is a better step in the right direction. These kids Mm -hmm. have changed his life. His wife is beautiful and supports him, so that's a good thing. And sometimes I feel like she looks down or something. Okay. It feels like she... And I'm like, hey, Jay, don't worry. Things that you're doing great, I always praise him, you know? Tell him how great he's doing, what a great father he is. And I think that helps him. Oh, I imagine so, definitely. Um, And to note, in case anyone doesn't know, the the grandbabies are named Angelina and Annabelle. So I was curious um, on the two names, if they're, were they picked up, like Angelina, was that for you? And then, of course, Annabella was picked after a friend or a family member? Angelina's after me, even though I'm Angela, they put Angelina. And Annabella, she just liked that name, Annabella. Like we call her Bella. Oh, really? So she, oh. Yeah. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Um, okay, and, and we want to talk about your daughter. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. Go ahead. Now, and then I have Salvatore. He's going to be six on Wednesday. And I have oh. Anthony Cummins and Robin Cummins. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I don't know how you keep all this straight, lady. Oh, my gosh. This is just, that's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. And I, and the midst of this, I'm still finishing the house. The oh, house. That's right. I was just gonna I was just gonna ask you that because I've seen these pictures going on and so I was gonna say, Hey, where are you at with the house? Are you excited or is it just Well, this week the basement gets completed, so that's a plus. Okay. And now we start we started already to sweep on the top floor. So we're almost mm-hmm. there, almost. Oh good. Good for you. And, of course, in case anybody doesn't know, you've done this more than once, right? You enjoy having multiple houses or doing this. Is it really a joy for you? Do you find a new home and decorate and all that? Is that something you really look forward to doing? I do. I like to do that, but me over the edge over a year. Over. Oh, no. Oh, gosh. I like to do it for oh, my a goodness. Week. Not for a year. Sure. 
Of course. <laughs> I understand. We do. We understand. Um, I wanted to touch base about um, some of the viewers that, or listeners or audience members, I should say. Some don't know that your daughter, of course, uh, was your partner in the Miami Monkey Bar, and, of course, she was filmed on that spinoff show. Um, maybe just tell us a little bit about your daughter, because a lot of times we get to see your son, but we really don't hear or, or see much of her. So maybe tell us a little bit about that darling girl. My daughter is uh, um, 30 years old. She's married <laughs> to she has a wonderful husband. She is a school teacher, so she's not on mob lives. You know, okay. she's not allowed to be on a show like that as a school teacher. I got it. So therefore, and that's why she she's never on the show because it's okay. against the board. It's against the board of education to be on a show such as mob lives when you're. A okay. kindergarten teacher. Got it. Now, of course, you said that she's expecting as well, of course. So does she live in the area where you're close to her, too, to where you get quality she, time together? She, oh, she's over my house every day at 315. Oh, nice. Yeah. How cool. Well, her son nice. gets out of school. My son-in-law comes with my grandson every day at 215. He does his homework, okay. watches TV. And he eats his snack, and then my daughter comes at 3.15, and they eat, and then they go home. But it's every huh, day. I got you. She, nice. And if, she doesn't, and if she doesn't eat, she packs the food up and goes. Oh, really? Cook every day. Goodness, if we didn't know any better, it would sound like Angela is a regular average lady that's not on TV. You sound like most of us with families and homes and a husband, and you sound very normal. Does that surprise you? Yes. And I still work work in the Drunken Monkey two days a week. So I'm very regular. No. But this is a good thing. We like that. Good. Because I was pretty nervous about 10 minutes ago before you called in to me. So I'm thinking you may not be normal because you make people nervous, my dear. In a good way, of course. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the, the spinoff. Um, in 2012, you had launched your show, Big Ange. Um, I have a question about that. Do you personally, yeah. do you think it's is it more rewarding or somewhat rigorous as far as to be a leading lady versus like on Mob Wives where you're a supportive cast member? Talk to me a little bit about that. Um, well, the, the, when we did the big, uh, big Ange spin off, Jennifer, Linda, and every girl that was on that show are uh, the girls I grew up with. So we've been friends nice. since teenage. And I thought that it was a very good show. I don't know what happened. And everybody yeah, still afraid. asked You know, everybody liked it. So that was us regular, real friends. And we're still friends to this day. And we always will be, I mean, we're friends over 30 years. So that's of a course. true bond. That was right. a true bond. It still is. And, I, right. and everybody seemed to like it. I don't know what happened. I know. I, I'm kind of surprised myself because I liked it, too, and tons of women loved it. I mean, because, of course, it, the spotlight was more on you. Not to say we don't love the other girls because I love them all, but it's nice to, to see a background about your life and what goes on and your friends and where you hang and what you do. So I think we should revisit putting Big Ends in another network or something. That's just my opinion, but I think you should have a show of your own again. I know. I really like it. People ask me every day and night, where is the Big Ends show? I'm like... I don't know. Tell me something, because I know a lot yeah. of people are, are, are wondering this. Do you ever get tired of having that camera in your face? Do you kind of just ever have that point where you're like, don't follow me, get that camera out of my face sort of scenario? But it's really not like that, because they really don't okay. follow you. You know, like, let's, oh. say, uh, we have to do, let's say we have to do a scene. You know, you go until like two, two and a half hours, you just do the scene, wherever it is. If it's in my house, then the camera. Other than that, that's all it is. So it's not that big of a deal. Oh, okay. Nice. They don't Very nice. You know, they have my house with the lights in it that they stay there all the time. So when they come, they plug the lights in that are already on my walls, and we start. So it's really not such a big deal. 
listen to that. We just learned something because to the most, to the to us, you know, the outside world that watches you, we think, oh, that must be tedious to have somebody around all the time. So thank you for that. I, I wasn't aware of the actual filming part of it. Um, and then if and then then if we have another scene, like we have a two hour break and then we start again, but it's not con- mm-hmm. continuously and it's not every day. So it's only four days a week too. Oh, nice. Very nice. That works out nicely then for you. And since Angela was nice enough to bring up Mob Lives. Let's talk about that for a little bit. Um, second season was your introduction, introduction to the show for the first time. So um, just a couple of things I want to cover with that as far as that goes. Um, I know that you've said publicly before that being on the show had, had cost you friendships um, in the past. So for that fact, um, do you still feel it was worth participating in it? No, I don't care about you know, like uh, the friendships. They weren't really much of a friendship uh, they don't talk to me now, so kids. Gotcha. You know, I understand. I got pe- I got some people don't want to talk to me because I'm on the mob life. That they that's on them. Now this heat right. is I think everybody's jealous, but whatever. I understand. Look, they, look, I didn't bring the mob to this life. It's just been there. So I don't know why they hate right. on me. <laughs> exactly. Actually, I know that you have named yourself, as you call yourself, the No Drama Mama. Um, did you have any hint or any idea that the show Mob Wives would be composed of so many different multiple melodramas when you signed on? I didn't realize what it was really about, but now I'm really real. They're all crazy. Oh, <laughs> goodness. I mean, now even I had to have a pee for Panay. I mean, it doesn't stop. It's every drama, drama, drama. Oh, goodness. But, you know, that's what it's about. What are you going to do? Right. No, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, I think one of the the neat things that I can say about you is is that every week um, you watch the show with your fans, which I think is really cool. Um, so let's say somebody comes to New York City or Staten Island. Um, can they just walk into the bar, sit down with you, watch it? How does that work exactly? Yeah, I'm in the I'm in the bar every. First of all, the show's going to start airing next week at eight o'clock. Tonight is nine o'clock, but the, it's going to be airing every Wednesday at eight. So I'm at the bar. Whoever wants to come, fine. Walk right in. We're there. I work on Tuesday nights also, seven to closing. I work Friday nights, seven to closing. I constantly have fans from all over the world come in. They take pictures with me. They buy the Drunken Monkey T-shirts. They have a good time. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, so now you know people, if you want to see Angela, you know how to find her. Tuesdays, Fridays, and Wednesdays at the Monkey. Gotcha. Now, um, I want to notate something. Go ahead, dear. I I, uh, I tweet it, too, every time. Oh. So everybody... I tweet it and I Instagram it every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Got it. Perfect. Now we all know that. Now I want to switch gears a little bit to something that people may not know. Um, you, your little circle of creativity, as I call it, included a stint um, in my big gay Italian wedding. Um, so maybe tell us a little bit about how you ended up becoming part of that production. Oh, okay. Anthony Wilson Wilkerson, he is the uh, producer and the creator of that play, and he is my good friend. Uh, there's a restaurant in Staten Island called Angelina. She's very close mm-hmm. to me, and I'm very close with her. I'm very friendly with her. So that's okay. how that came up. And I'm very big with the gay community. They love me. I have a lot of gay friends. So I went and did it. I did them a favor, and I did it. My sister's also now, been in that play. Janine, you mean? Oh, I didn't know that. She, she was in it twice already. I'm actually nice. doing it again in March. I'm actually doing oh, nice. it again in March. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Now, I want to share a story about that to the listening audience. You may not know this, um, and I'll share the story. Uh, you were asked by an admirer, I know, to assist you in doing a marriage proposal. This is a gay gentleman that was going to propose. And then surprisingly, which shocks me, is because not all of your what we call uh, publicly known individuals will go off and do something like this. Not only did you help him, but you actually threw him an engagement party. So I was just curious as to why you chose to do that. That's, that, that's such a, a, 
gratuitous thing to do. Because that's how I am. I'm very nice like that. I I support the gays in a big way. And I I was there for them. And I actually enjoyed doing the, uh, you know, performing the ceremony on stage. It was fun. And it was all in fun and it was good. And I, I, I just enjoyed myself. And I made everybody happy. So that's all I'm about, making people happy. Nice, very, very nice. And he must have been elated, of course, because like I said, not oftentimes you approach a celebrity and it's, and, and they're kind of hands-off, you know what I mean? And you're very, very approachable. Have you always been that way? I am. And people say, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I go, yeah, I'm a regular person. You know, I stop. <laughs> anything, I'm, anything I'm doing, I stop. I take a picture. I never say no, except if I'm with my daughter and my grandchildren. You know, it's a little uncomfortable. My kids don't like it. Right. You know, like we're out to, if I'm having a family day, I say I'm sorry. But, of course, you know, it takes a lot of time out of your day. If I have to oh, stop course, every sure. five minutes. You know, if I have to stop every five minutes, take a picture with every single person, and I see when I'm with my kids and my grandchildren, I'll never get what I'm there to do. Right. So I think that, that's the only time I say I can't when I'm with my family. Other than that, I do it. I stop my car in the streets and do it, please. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Well, that's impressive. And nice. Very nice. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, and Saturday, so every, every time I'm, I'm at a red light or something, in Staten Island, please, the people are screaming, mm-hmm. oh, Say that they're taking a picture through their car window. The people are beeping the horns. It's crazy what goes on. Oh my God! Imagine you probably have very little sense of privacy. When I'm in my house and I lock the door, I got a lot of privacy. <laughs> well, thank God for that one. Um, um, I, I, I want to switch gears. I don't take offense to it. I'm very honored by it. So I, oh, I nice. do. If it wasn't for my fans, I wouldn't be where I am. So that's why I go out of my way to do it. And that's exactly one of the reasons why people like you so much. And I've heard that millions and millions of times. Just you're you're reaching out yeah. for people and to people and, and being so approachable. It's one of many reasons, I have to say. And kudos to you on that because, like I said, not everybody does that. So that's awesome. Um, I want to talk a little bit uh, again. Those that may not know, you had your first bridal gown on early at the age of 18 was your first marriage. Um, And you've clearly confessed uh, that you continue to yearn for the younger males. Um, And hopefully one is capable of kind of bathing you in the bling bling, as we've heard before, that you like so much. Um, We watched that you eventually elected to marry my favorite guy. This is, I get a kick out of Neil. I think he's funny. Neil Murphy, of course, is Angela's husband. Um, So... Logically, I'm going to ask you, he kind of seems like a leap from your younger days, so maybe perhaps provide, um, just tell us a little bit how he won you over, because for a while there, it looked like he wasn't going to. So I'm like, well, we all want to know a little bit about Neil, so maybe share a little bit about him, if you want. Okay. I met Neil in the Drunken Monkey okay. while we were building. I met Neil. Okay, he was coming around every day. He's just a regular, he was a golfer, city worker, sanitation I don't know how it happened, but it did. Chris Neal is so not my type in every which way there is. But okay. I was thinking, I need I need a pension. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, going out with street guys, you ain't getting no pension. You ain't getting shit. Really? They die, you're done. At least if Neil dies right. and anything ever happens to him, I'll always have money for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I gotcha. Um, That's how it started, you know, as a joke. And it really happened really? that way. Really? Huh. Neil is a very, very easy going. Neil is a very, very easy going guy. Imagine Nothing bothers him. Nothing bothers him. He's very laxy daisy. He doesn't, he's not jealous. He doesn't care. Guys hang all over me all the time, my whole life. It doesn't bother him. He's very easy to get along with. 
Nice. Now, is all this attention kind of hard for him to handle, though? What? Oh, I'm sorry. The, I was just curious. All this attention as far as on the both of you, you know, is does that get to be a little hard for him to handle because he's not, you know, he doesn't come from a lifestyle where, you know, all of this is happening. Yeah. So was, was it an adjustment yeah. for him? Well, you know, it came like it didn't happen like all in one day. It came like, right. you know, gradually with the years ago. So he kind of adjusted to it, and now people even stop him for pitches. <gasps> really? So it's really funny. And on my address, like my uh, front of my house, my address sign says Big Ange and Mr. Big Ange. <laughs> <laughs> and his Twitter says Mr. Big Ange VH1, which I thought was so funny. I'm like, oh, my God, it says Mr. Big Ange. That is so cute. Says, it's very, very sweet. It says, it says it on my address, too, in front of my house on the plaque. Oh, my God. So he, How he, funny is that? He, he, you know, he thinks it's funny. It doesn't bother him. You know, any other guy would probably, what are you, day, day? Not Neil. You know, he goes with the flow. <laughs> you know, I love it. That's absolutely awesome. Him. Gotcha. Um, so, one more question on that. I wanted to ask, yes. um, you have stated before, of course, that back in the day your bulls were all kind of, you know, obviously wise guys. Now, did you prefer that because um, everybody kind of comes from the same lifestyle? Was that your choice from the get-go? And, and how did you start, how did you go, well, yeah, just tell us a little all bit right. what appeals you to the wise guys. All right. When you live in Brooklyn on Avenue U and 13th Avenue, that's the kind of guys they are. Now, that's just the, the name of you. That's what's there. All street sure. guys. Well, that's okay. where you brought up. That's where you live. That's where you go. That's where you go out. Okay. You know, when I, and then when I moved to Staff Island, I met the Irish guy. You see? <laughs> I just brought up in that neighborhood, brought up around those people. So that's who you gravitate towards. Got it. Understand that. And there ain't nothing, and there ain't nothing like, you know, having a guy wine dine you and buy you diamonds. Hello. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. Thank you. Because I, okay. Because Neil surely, Neil surely ain't doing that with his paycheck. <laughs> he's but a I already did that. Okay. Yeah, and he's been, he's been working hard with the snow. You know, I've had oh, that done that. I've had that done that, and it ain't worth it. It's very nice having a, re, a regular life with a normal guy that you know is coming home not going to jail, not getting killed, not becoming an informer. He's just a regular person. Nice. Very nice. It Thank you for that. Nice. Yeah. At this, age, at this age of my life, it makes it nice, calm, and peaceful. Nice. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. Now, I want to talk a little bit about... Um, you know, you have so many labels in your life, so to speak, because mom, grandmother, we could go on and on and on. One of the things that people, I think, don't know is that you actually um, are an author. 2012, you had done the release of Bigger is Better, Real Life Wisdom from the No Drama Mama. So maybe tell us a bit about the book, and then um, I found it on Amazon, but is it available anywhere else as well? Now, listen, I don't even know what happened with that book. That book was great. I don't know what happened. Everybody loved it, and I just vanished, you know. I don't know what went on really? there. People are still asking me for the book. I don't know. Yeah, I, and that was one of the reasons because I wanted a copy. I'm like, well, can I just go to Amazon and get it? Because I saw it on Amazon or I thought it was there. And Yes. And I think you could get it on um, eBay too. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All right. Well, I want to do a little delightful diversion and talk a bit about food because, of course, Ange is very big on food. Um, weekly, I know that you host anywhere from 15 to 25 people in your own home and you cook for them. You recently competed in the All-Star Meatball Challenge in 2014, captured the first place there, and then faithfully and frequently, I know you list recipes and restaurant recommendations on your website. Um, so first off, Tell me, give me a few factors that account for why you think you all the food that you make is just so classic and, and, and you're fabulous at it. Tell me a few tips. How does how do you become a great chef in your own home? Okay. First of all, I've been cooking since I'm 14 because my mother and father split up, and I still with my father and my four brothers. So I became their mother. 
I like took care of my brothers and my father, so I learned how to cook. My father was a chef, and my mother was a fantastic cook. So I learned off of them how to cook. Okay. Okay. So I've been cooking since I'm 14, and I can only cook for a large amount of people because that's all I know. I can't cook for me and you. So I have to cook for a lot of people. That's why my kids always come and get the food, take the food, whatever. And my friends always eat over. And and actually, I'm a very fast cook. Everything with garlic and oil tastes great. So that's what I do. Ah, I like that. I've done that too. I like it. Is there a favorite or is there a dish that you have as your own specialty per se, like this is Angie's favorite thing to make or does the best? Well, that's what... Well, for the past two days, I made chicken cutlets, chicken soup, uh, chicken wing scapinelle, Spanish okay. pork, potatoes, tomlets. This is all, all in my refrigerator as we speak. My son is in wow. the produce business. My son is in the produce business, so he brings me boxes of produce constantly. So I made. Zucchini, eggplant, fresh tomatoes, onion, garlic with basil, fresh vegetables. Like, it's uh, to me, it's a joy. It stops me from thinking. I just start cooking, and I like it. I enjoy it. Nice. I don't enjoy cleaning the mess up. I enjoy cooking <laughs> food. Of course, that makes sense. I know you've said the top two joints, Angelina's, and of course, um, Bella Mama. Rose. Now, both of those are in New York City. Um, I'm just curious. Uh, recommendations. Why Why those in particular, as far as those two being great well, restaurants? Tell us a little bit about why. Because they're in Staten Island, and my very dear friends own them, and they have delicious food. Ah, very simply put. Nice. Um, Drunken well, Monkey, do you offer food? No, we have no food. Okay, I wasn't sure about that. I just wanted to clarify. It's just a boss. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, because a lot we of times in New York City, as you know. We used to have a, a food, it was a restaurant bar, but we, the restaurant part wasn't doing that great, so we eliminated it and made a dance floor. Ah, I gotcha. I see. Okay. Well, and, of course, like uh, I was just going to say, and I've been to the bars, so I know the ambiance, and, of course, um, Tell me a little bit about, obviously it's called Drunken Monkey, so you must have some, um, some the monkey thing. Tell us about the monkey thing. You must have some liking to that or, or something, because, of course, every franchise has been of the monkey. I love monkeys. I think they're the closest animals to humans. Really? I just love them very entertaining. I like watching them. I just love monkeys. I don't know why. I think they're the cutest little thing. Aww. Does that I mean that you're going to have one in the home? Are you going to have one in the house? Oh. A monkey, that is? No. I'm scared. I, I, I like to look for them, but I'm scared of them. Oh, my the God. I have <laughs> two Pomeranians. That's enough. I got gotcha. you. Of course. That makes sense. I understand. Now, you know, um, this question has been asked to me 50 times in the last 24 hours since everybody knew I was going to ask you. So, of course, you know, once you were on Mob Wives and you made this comment about having another baby. So, should I ask that question? Yeah. <laughs> Will now, there be a little meal? I, I would have done that up until I had four grandchildren in one year. That's out. No way. My okay. house already looks, my house looks like I have, I have a nursery, I have carriages, Walk it, pack and place all over the house. No, I have oh enough to do And I babysit, <laughs> I, least, I babysit at least three, four times a week. I pick my grandson up from school. I babysit Angelina. The next day, I babysit Annabella. Uh, 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 uh. They go home, I go to Florida. <laughs> you know, they nice. go home. Uh, Matter of fact, I think I'm going to book a ticket today to leave for four days. I need to get at it. I gotcha. I understand. Just thought we'd throw that out there because I know that we had heard that. So I'm like, yeah, when I heard it, I was like, is she kidding me? A baby? Because we all thought, no way, you know? You know, as soon as, you know, Neil was only 42. When we talked about it, it was, it was like 40. That he would like to have a son. Okay, you should have a 35-year-old wife. <laughs> 
I understand. I do. Okay. And well, then, now we know no baby. Lost. And then a month later, we found out his daughter and my son were having babies. Now, eight months later, my son, my daughter, having babies. Ha-ha, no more babies. We've had enough of babies. <laughs> Very well put. And, I like that. That's good. And it, and, it co- and it cost me the same amount of money if I had my own babies. Because all I do is buy, 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 buy. Party, 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 right. party. Right. I understand. I do. I get it. <laughs> I'm cute. Okay. Um, we have two big topics here we want to cover. The first of which is, of course, um, I want to talk a little bit about Big Ange wines. Um, for those of you that don't know, there's three different flavors, the Chardonnay, the Cabernet, and the Prosecco. And they're offered in four different states thus far, Illinois, New Jersey, New York City, and Massachusetts. A um, couple questions about that. Um, if you were sitting at a wine bar right now, if I was sitting with you and having a drink, what would you order? What do you normally drink? I normally drink uh, Belvedere and Club Soda, but if I was to have a glass of wine, I would definitely have the Cabernet. I gotcha. Now, I'm being in, wine in, really? Yeah. Okay. Um, as far as the wine itself, your wines, the Big Ange wines, um, now tell us a little bit about, because most people don't know what it's like to have a wine line and pick your own thing. Um, so how did you kind of establish these three different types of wines, and how did you establish where you were going to distribute them first? Okay, first off, I love to drink, I like Jordan wine. So I was trying to go to a cheaper version of a Jordan. Then I love, uh, when I drink white wine, I like to have Pinot Grigio, just to say in a margarita is fine by me, but now, you know what I'm at with my friend. Um, and so I was trying to go by that flavor. So when I go out with my girlfriend and we go for brunch, we have a bottle of Clico. So I was going by, like, that kind of flavor. So those were the three that I was trying to go by, because that's what mm-hmm. I drink quite, quite often. You know, and out my friends. I don't. I'm not over the top ordering a Cristal. I have Quick Cloud, thank you. And uh-huh. Bottle of Jordan is always a good bottle, and for the price, it's great. Uh-huh. And and Pinot Grigio Santa Margarita is just a regular wine, but it's okay. It's decent. So, okay. and I didn't want it to be expensive, so I was trying to go through those tastes by the cheaper way. Because people cannot afford, not everybody could afford hundred dollar bottle of wine. So this is fourteen dollars. Thank you very much, and it's very good. The champagne is sixteen. The wine is thirteen or fourteen, or sixteen or seventeen. So it's very reasonable, very good. And I um, felt since you- I was in the golf business that I think a wine was good. Now I would like to work on a vodka. I was just going to ask you that if you plan on expanding with more wines or more alcohols or things like that. I would like to try vodka. And before I forget to ask you, are you having an upcoming wine? I'm not sure where your next tasting is going to be or where you're going to be signing next. Can you tell us about that? My wine, I'm I'm actually um, going to set something up tomorrow in a Greek okay. restaurant in Manhattan for a wine signing. I have an okay. appointment tomorrow to set the date. And I'm also doing, I think I'm doing an event in February somewhere in Long Island. It will be posted on my Instagram and Twitter. Everybody can follow it. They tell you where my events are and the time and the place. And gotcha. everybody is and- welcome to come know what a reservation they call. It's always posted. Whatever my events are going to be, two weeks prior, they are on Twitter and Instagram. But my wines are now nationwide on the, You can find them nationwide on the Internet. You know, you go to my okay. website, you can mm-hmm. get the wine everywhere now. So that's yes, because I noticed that. I was in... I, 
I'm in Wisconsin, and so I went to the liquor store, and I'm like, oh, I can't get any Big Ange wines because I'm in Wisconsin, not Illinois. So I have to cross the border to go get some. So I couldn't get any today, but I know that it's there in Illinois. Is it going to eventually find its way to the 50 states, do you think, like in, in grocers and in liquor stores at some point? Well, I'm hoping that we get there. We're trying. We're working. Me and my me and our little Jen, my PR, we are really working hard on this point. Okay. Now, one day, she's not working with getting it somewhere. So she's doing a fabulous job, and we're putting it out there as much as we can. Sure. Of course. Now, when you do these can signings and events, does me, look... Get, oh, sorry. Me in a, get me in a place of where you are. I would love to. I would. I can get you here easily. I was just hoping you'd say that. <laughs> yes, I could get you in Wisconsin. Of course I can. There'd be about a thousand women that would line up to buy it. Uh, that's what happens everywhere I go. So if you could set one up, you'd tell little Jen, and we're there. Okay. Oh, I would love that. Absolutely love that. That would be awesome. Um, does Louie go with you to these events? Do people get to meet Louie too? No, I don't take Louie. Louie stays home with his little wife, Lola. <laughs> How cute. Very, very cute. They I like that. They sleep in the bed together and they cuddle together. The cutest little thing. But they yak Oh, Oh, I bet. I bet. And then do they sleep in bed with you? They crawl up and sleep in bed and cuddle? Yes. They both sleep on my head. One on each pillow. Right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Look at that. Um, <laughs> I wanted to ask you this question. I've seen you tweet this. I, I ha- but Angela has a habit of dropping her phone in the toilet. Is this true? Really? Do you know what I do? I put it in the back pocket of my jeans all the time, and I do. And every time I go to go to the bathroom, the phone falls in my toilet. Oh, my gosh. And it happened to me <laughs> three times. And like one month. Oh, my God, you poor thing. Now I'm, I was trying to, I always keep it in my bra. But like when I was okay. on, I don't know, in the bra work, and I shoved it in my back. I don't know what the hell I, that was Three times I did it, and three times they did it. I got you. Now I stick it right in the bar where it belongs. Good for you. Good, and you won't be losing it then. Perfect. Uh, Two more things we want to cover here, the first of which is I want to mention on Big Angel's website, of course, in case anybody's interested in getting merchandise, you've got T-shirts on there, you've got coffee mugs on there, she's got these cute little onesies on there for babies. These are the cutest little things. Oh, my gosh, absolutely adorable. Um, so check out her website as far as that part goes. Um, obviously, the Big Ange Wines has a website of its own um, as far as that goes. But the one thing I want to talk about that I know that a lot of people may not necessarily know about is um, you have a heart for a plentitude of phil- philanthropic purposes. And I've constantly seen you in pictures doing charity, being in all different places. You have an organization that you started with yourself and Jennifer, of course, called Big Ange's Angels, which is all-volunteer organization founded the day after Hurricane Sandy. Um, purpose of this is to provide proceeds to those who have been um, hurt by Hurricane Sandy. So first off, um, tell me a little bit more about um, this organization, why it means so much to you, and of course, us as fans and followers of yours, how can we help? Uh, well, I have the Big Angel, uh, Angels website page. Um, okay. We, I try to help with as much... Well, any people, let's say, for instance, last week, there was a lady, her name was Roxana Paragiso. I met her once before. She came to one of my appearances. She has cancer. She reaches out to me this week that she's hungry. She has no food. And she's sick and she's 105 pounds and all that. I'm like, okay, what can I do to help? You know. She goes, oh, she wants me to bring her food. She lives two hours away, you know. Right. Now, I would do anything, but if I can't get there, I can't get there. You know, I'm busy. Right. I work. Right. I have family. I can't drive two hours away to bring you dinner. So I, right. I say, what's your address? Give me your address. She gives me her address. I Google her neighborhood. I get the five-star restaurant, and I get my credit card, and I send her a week's worth of food. Wow. You know, that's, that's any, uh, recently a family member of mine, when your old son passed away on Halloween uh, mm-hmm. from, an allergy, from an allergy attack, my daughter's 
husband's cousin. We did an emergency fundraiser in the bar, put it on the website, raised 65000 We gave it to the family so they could bury their seven-year-old son. Oh, my gosh. So people know how to reach me in desperate need of help. I will do whatever I can to help somebody. And what is the current state as far as, obviously, all the devastation after Hurricane Sandy? Um, I guess, what was that like, just living in that moment? That must have been horrific for all of you. It was like living in a movie. I felt like I was in a a movie. The way everything looked, the way it was going on, all you heard was silence. It was something, it was like when 9-11 happened. God, how devastating. It was very devastating. And we did a lot to help. We actually built, for this little Italian couple, they were the cutest people ever, we built them a new house. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I'm just blown away. My goodness. Yeah, and and especially when you've lost everything like that, your home, your dignity, your everything, your clothing, you have nowhere to go. It's a natural disaster. I, I can imagine the horrific, just the horrific sight that must have been. Um, now, it how often do you get a chance? Oh, I bet. Do you, um, as far as the big angels, angels go, um, now is that typically run more so by Jennifer, or do you still have time to be hands-on with that as well? Well, uh, Jennifer sets everything up. I, I come to whatever she does. I do it. I got you. She sets it you. up, and I'm there. But we, we, if any, basically, the Angie's Angel started with breast cancer. We do it every year. We have a very big thing for breast cancer every October. Okay. We, and we do the big events in the park, and then everybody comes to the bar. We have the big party, all the food donated. It's a big day every year. I imagine. Are there any uh, personal charities of your own that you have that are close to your heart? I'm big with the cancer. I'm big with the breast cancer. My best friend died from it, so I'm very big. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Now... Um, I just have a couple quick things for you because our time has gone so quickly. Oh, my goodness, and I don't want to keep you too terribly long. I just want to ask a couple quick things here. Um, I'm just going to read off all of this for all the people that are listening because not everybody may know where you are. Um, As far as Facebook goes, you have a couple different entities on there, which is Big Ange Wines, Big Ange's Angels, of course, yourself, you and your own personal page, and then the Drunken Monkey Bar and Grill. Um, Websites, uh, obviously, MobWives, www.vh1.com www.bigangewines.com and then www.bigangelofficial.com which is your website and on there of course like I said you've got the cooking stuff, the merchandise you've got all different kinds of stuff about yourself on there. Uh, Your Twitter is at bigangevh1 and that's B-I-G-G-A-N-G same thing with Instagram Um, for any of uh, and of course Amazon.com is what I mentioned for the book. I've seen you on YouTube, of course. Um, for anybody wanting to know about Neil, he's got a Twitter, at Mr. Big Ange VH1. Uh, am I missing anything? Any place to no, find you? No, oh, I got everybody. Find or I got everything. <laughs> yes, I think everybody can find you. In life, in real life. <laughs> Yes, in real life, standing there looking like a normal woman. Okay, I want to do two last things before we let you go. Uh, First of all, um, I just want you to take a breath for a second. And let me just tell you the overall impressions of both myself and everybody that I've been in contact with um, who knows you, doesn't know you, people that watch you. Let me just tell you what people think of you, in case you might not have heard this before, because you may or may not hear this very often. Um, The first time that I posted and put down uh, that you were going to be on my show, people were just aghast. And why? Because... um, some of the first things I heard about was your generosity and heart and genuine generosity and heart, not because you're a television star, but because you're a very kind and decent woman. Some people talk about your beauty and the fact that you're so much older and you look terrific. And yes, we all know that, yes, there's been a bit of perking and tweaking, but overall you maintain that beauty. And I think that we think that that has a lot to do with the people that you hang out with and associate with and such. And you, you gravitate 
to people, and, and naturally on a regular basis. Um, I think people find you to be genuine and, and dear and intelligent and very different from your camera persona. Um, everybody's intrigued about you because you have this larger-than-life personality. But honestly, I truthfully believe that you're a very simple gal that deserves all of this attention because you're just you're you're an out of the norm celebrity. Does that make sense? You're not your real reality type, so to speak, which we all think. Um, we're fascinated by you, and and we love what you do, and we love the fact that you're part of our lives, whether it's on television or on Facebook or on Twitter or Instagram. Um, and you're in some ways really very inspirational. I'm not quite so sure how many lives that you know that you touch on a regular basis. Um, so we all kind of collectively wanted you to know that. Um, and then there's Thank just two you. simple Thank things you. before I let you go. Oh, you're welcome. Um, the first of which is uh, I'm going to be coming to New York um, next weekend or actually next okay. week, next Wednesday. I'll be there next Wednesday. So I'd like to come to the Drunken Monkey because I have a gift for you. I have a Packer sweatshirt for your soon-to-be grandchild in April that I don't want. <laughs> so you can have it. Um, awesome. uh, it's a little gift for your grandbaby. So I'll come and I'll, and I'll say hi to you and show up, um, and uh, I can meet you face-to-face so because like I have a surprise. O'clock, so come at like 7 o'clock so we can watch the show. Oh, that would be absolutely wonderful, actually. I have to be in Rochester dropping off donations during the day, so I'm going to take care of doing that, and then I can swing back down over by you. It's going to be a very long day, but I can certainly get over to you because I'll have a surprise or two for you. And I don't want to forget to mention that you had Instagrammed yesterday something about winning an autographed bottle of wine. Okay. I'll have that for you, too. <laughs> that would be lovely. And I wonder if I begged you nicely, do you think maybe just maybe I could ask you for a second one and then we can kind of raffle that off to somebody that listened today. We'll we'll put it some kind of contest together or something if you don't mind. Or I'll just buy a for bunch sure. of them and you can just sign for, a couple. For sure. Don't worry. You there. When you come, I will have that. it ready for you. I would absolutely love that. That would be absolutely fabulous and wonderful. Um, and I cannot thank you enough. I, I just can't thank you enough for the amount of time we had. I absolutely loved it. I think you're a wonderful woman. I'm glad that I got a chance to watch you on the show, and I can't wait to meet you in person. It will be wonderful. I, I can't wait for next Wednesday. I'll have you fine waiting. <laughs> that would be wonderful. And then we can sit and chit-chat like two regular girls in a bar. It will be wonderful. And set up something in Wisconsin. I'm coming. Oh, definitely. I'll be working on it this afternoon once we get off of the show here. I've got to take care of a few things like talk to my listeners about you and a couple other things. And then uh, after I get done, yeah, Jen and I will hook up. I'll have her give me a call, and we'll get it worked out. I'll probably, I probably might be able to get info for you before I get there so we can talk in person. Okay, okay. That sounds All wonderful. Right, we would you. like that. All right, Great, my dear, you have yourself a wonderful day. You too, bye. All right, bye-bye. Okay, kids, was that absolutely, absolutely fabulous or what? I think she was absolutely amazing. I'm not so sure if I did 100% as well as I normally do, but then, of course, when you're interviewing Big Ange, how do you not end up being very nervous, right? So I think she did wonderful. Hopefully I did wonderful, um, as you can hear, obviously. Um, apparently I'm getting an autographed bottle of wine, which I kind of just snuck in there. But moreover, the whole reason I wanted to talk to her about that is because we want to auto- have her autograph a couple different bottles. What I'm going to do after this show is over with is I'm going to create a Facebook page. What Ann just doesn't know is that we're going to surprise her a little bit. I'm going to try to see uh, if we can make this special for her, for me, and for everybody that's involved with this. Um, so again, once again, Jennifer, thank you so very much. That would be her better half, and that's little Jen who does her productions and her promotions. Thank you so much for getting big Ange um, on there. If I have my way, when I go down there to meet her, we're going to beg and plead with her to see if I could have her do a strictly all-call-in scenario where basically she calls in to talk to all the listeners and the fans and just answers questions that you have instead of the questions that I just asked her. And then this way you guys get a chance to be more involved. Um, today is a little more time-sensitive for her and for me, so unfortunately we couldn't have a long, long show. Um, so that takes care of Big Ange. Um when I get done with this show, if you look on my Facebook page and on my show page, you're going to see all the ways for me to be able to list, um, to find her, her web pages again, her Facebook pages, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that takes care of the big Ange side of things. Now, there's four other things that I wanted to cover on the show today uh, before I let you guys go. Um, the first of which is that we wanted to talk about the documentary. Um, any of you that are Facebook friends of mine know about this already, but let me just mention it again. Um, I am casting for a all-female biker documentary. There are four purposes to this documentary, the first of which is to showcase the girls um, that are out there, meaning I want to make them parallel to the men. Not that they're not already, but I want them to be seen as individuals who can hold their own next to men as far as on a bike, 
is in public, is in relationships, all the way across the board. That's number one. Number two is to try to remove the persona that uh, biker individuals have to be people that are tough and rough-looking, individuals that are uh, just wear a lot of makeup and talk crudely and sleep around or just live on a bike all the time. These are real live women with real faces and jobs and hardworking individuals and very likable ladies. I've got friends all across the United States. Uh, men and women both that are bikers. But what's most important is we need to take that persona away, especially since most of us I know have watched Sons of Anarchy at one point in time. Sons of Anarchy is a terrific show. And as you know, I interview those people. But at the end of the day, if you look at the persona that's presented on that show, you're seeing women who are either directing porn, standing behind a bar, running around half naked. The women on the show really did not ride very much at all. So like I said, we want to get rid of that stigma that's number two. Number three is we want to shine some light in terms of having a bait on there, having legislators on there, talking about how the road can be made safer for motorcyclists out there. And that's on both sides of the fence, meaning whether it's male or female. We want to make sure that there are less casualties, injuries, and deaths that are relative to that. And then number four, of course, is we're going to discuss and take a look at some of the more historic um, male or excuse me, female riders that are out there. Um, I'm giving some consideration to individuals that have been, you know, injured, talking about individuals that have passed due to that. Um, And the main thing is right now I'm looking to cast the the magic four, as I call them, which is the four main groups that I see here is an occasional rider, which is somebody that hops on the bike once in a while, not too often. Then you've got yourself an avid rider, which is somebody who's there, I mean, constantly. And then, of course, obviously somebody who's affiliated in a motorcycle organization, such as Chrome Divas, the letters on steel, that sort of good stuff. And then the fourth one, of course, is I'm speaking to a couple ladies who might be bold enough to come on um, who are either involved with at present or are former old ladies. Um, and we want to talk a little bit about that as well. So those magic four have to be between the age bracket of 35 to 55. I'll be casting two of them in Wisconsin. One of them will be in um, Las Vegas, and then one of them will be in New York City. So my job is cut out for me. Um, fortunately, I'm not starting filming until March 1st, so I have some time to play with, and I do have some help. So if you happen to know anyone at all, if you're listening, and they might be interested in participating, and that is either as a castmate of the Magic Four, and if you don't fit in that age bracket, you can still participate as long as you're an actual rider, you have your license, you live in those three states, um, and you're able to track me down, basically, and convince me, (laughs) so to speak, because that's the hard part. Um, In order to do this, if you have any information or any leads, you can either Facebook me, and of course, my name's Cindy, the last name M-I-C-H, most of you are my friends, I think. So uh, you can uh, text me or message me there. You can also email me at cin4251 at gmail.com. If you're meeting me for the first time and listening today, um, you're listening on the platform Sins Chat Corner. So you can either go to the Blog Talk Radio uh, area, and they have a place where you can message me here, or you can go online and you can find me. I have, I think, about 75 Facebook pages at present. I've forgotten how many at this point. In any case, uh, Find me there. Just send me a message. Send me a picture. Send me information, phone numbers, whatever have you. Um, As it stands in Wisconsin right now, I'm looking to find maybe 15 more girls to talk to. After that, I probably should make some form of concern. I'll look and see what we've got at that point. So I'm not going to make too many prejudgments on that. So as far as that goes, that's the documentary side of things. Let's talk a minute about HODA. To those of you who are bikers or biker enthusiasts or even individuals who have friends that are bikers, I'm sure we all saw what happened yesterday on the Today Show as far as this whole bit about her and Kathy Lee dressing up and going out and alluding to the fact that bikers are losers. A um, couple quick thoughts I want to do on that, and I'll tell you what I have going on. I have called NBC, obviously, and I have tweeted them. I've also, in addition to it, sent a formal request um, saying that somebody listened to the show today because I'm voicing my thoughts for a reason. I think it's important that people hear this and listen to this. Um, first off, I'm entertaining the idea if I can find the time of actually doing an all biker show where I literally have all sorts of bikers and this is open to men or women both to call in and just basically talk about this, talk about what their actions do in the community to make other individuals look at bikers and say to themselves, I want to know those kind of people or put that persona or that name tag upon them. Um, so I'm entertaining the idea of doing that and then forwarding it to their show and saying, look, get us on here and let's talk about this. This is a real issue. And yes, although Hoda finds it cute that she went and tweeted and said something to the effect of, you know, I didn't mean you guys, I meant us. 
it's really not very cute because what you're doing is being downgrading in a very public fashion. Um, I am in the media. I'm the first one to tell you that. Um, if you're on my Facebook page and I got a problem with you, I'll complain about you all day long. It's rare that I will ever put a name to anybody. But the bottom line is, you know, if it's warranted, that's all fine and good. In this case, it wasn't warranted. It was just a pot shot. It was ridiculous. Now, by the same token, most of us who um, are in this world, I've seen all sorts of people calling her every name in the book and insulting her. I'm here to tell you people that's not going to do any good. Um, I personally, as much as I dislike the actions of another individual, um, name calling, as I've found, and even for me, I'm guilty of it, it never solved anything. Calling Hoda every name in the book isn't going to change what happened. You know, uh, sending a very vehement, you know, message out there, going out there and saying, hey, this is what you need to do, educating them about that, giving them a hands-on view of what this life is like, I think will be much better suited in terms of just name-calling and slashing it all over the internet or, you know, et cetera. I mean, because unfortunately nowadays, just so that people know, NBC and that show are very powerful. So in my world, um, people get away with murder, literally, so to speak, um, you know, and it's wrong and it's not justified, but nonetheless it happens. And so what I'm trying to do is just kind of diffuse the situation and see what I can do in my little happy corner of the world to try to make things easier um, and to take that stigma away. And hopefully if I give enough push with Hoda, she'll be able to, and she doesn't need to host me, but she'll at least be able to listen to this show and know, know the lasting impression that she left with people just by one little antic on her show. So that's kind of my take on the whole Hoda situation, on the documentary situation. Um, House of Mercy, let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, House of Mercy, Rochester. That's a homeless shelter located in Rochester, of course. I interviewed Sister Grace, who is 79 years of age, did that a few weeks ago. Um, And I was so very moved by her actions, by the type of person she was. Um, Just to give a little backstory, Sanctuary Village, which is located in New York City as well, is a homeless, um, tented community, basically. Basically, what they did was all the people without a home built tents, and they were living there. They had their possessions there. They had, uh, you know, other different things that were there. Basically, whatever they owned, that was personal to them. And for whatever reason, the city decided, and my personal take on this is because it was an eyesore to them, they kind of came in one day and just said, you know what, oops, sorry about this, brought a big old bulldozer in, and literally bulldozed about 40 or 42 tents. So the entire thing was basically wiped out. There was no formal apology. There was no replacement of materials for anything. It was just gone, done. I find that to be irreprehensible, amongst other words. Heinous is another one that comes to mind. So uh, the minute I was uh, alarmed, or excuse me, informed, by the way, thank you so much, Jules Ray, another friend of mine who's a biker in New York City, um, for tipping me off to this. And all because of her actions, I went ahead and I contacted Sanctuary Village and the House of Mercy, and I said, what can I do? And so what we did was put together two different ideas. First of all, which is what I've been campaigning and begging people for, which is my goal, my personal goal is to get 50, total of 50 boxes, and I'm driving, literally driving from the state of Wisconsin to Rochester because we can't get it on a plane, and I'm going to be taking stuff, men's clothing, women's clothing, gloves, socks, personal items, toys, Anything you want to get rid of that's in decent shape, they will use it. Because let me tell you, she's got a need for everything there. She's in the process of building a brand-new homeless shelter. It costs them $87,000, which they have now raised, if my understanding is correct. So we need to get them stuff. She needs stuff. She's 89 years – excuse me, 79. I can tell I'm getting tired now. 79 years of age, and this is a lot of work and a lot of responsibility. And I believe in giving back. So, of course – any little thing that you can do in the local area, if you're local, if you're New York City, I'll certainly take anything that you're willing to give me, that you'll bring to me, that you'll donate to me. Um, you know, I definitely want to pay it forward. So as it stands now, I have about 20 boxes here in my basement. So basically, you need to step it up and get a little, like about 25 more boxes. I'll settle for that. How about 45? If we can get 25 more boxes, I will be happier than I'll get out, um, you know, as far as that goes. So that's the House of Mercy thing. Number one is the donations. And number two is my intention is to try to raise a substantial amount of money to try to help her to take care of that homeless shelter. And we'll get more details on that as far as I can tell within the next week, if I'm not mistaken, and I'll be able to post that information online. So a lot of times, look at my Facebook pages, look at my show pages to see what's going on as far as that goes and such. Um, I don't want to forget a couple of personal items before I get to my son, because a lot of you have been kind enough to be following the journey that I've had with myself and my son, Kerwin. Um, so we want to talk a little bit about him in closing. But before I get to that, um, I want to say a couple quick shout-outs. First of all, to Susan Frito, who I hope is listening. Susan, 
Susan is a beautiful, beautiful, wonderful woman. Why? Because she has a heart of gold. Second of all, I've been very fortunate to become friends with her. I'm very happy to report, and I hope she doesn't tell me when I say this, that she'll be coming on my show because she's also an author. She lives in the state of Pennsylvania, and I'm hoping to get to her as a surprise quickie visit on my trip to New York, but don't tell her. Um, So my thoughts and prayers go out to you, my lovely lady, because I know you've not been feeling well and you've been under the weather, and I've missed you so very much. So from me to you very publicly, I just wanted to say hello. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you're feeling better. Second of all, I wanted to do a very public shout-out to my very dear friend, Lana Graziano. First of all, I'm going to be putting up a very public posting sometime this afternoon about all of her products because she has launched a whole food line. Very, very excited about that. Um, Graziano is, of course, responsible for Mob Wives, Jennifer Graziano, of course, being the producer. So please do your very best, if you can, to, to take five minutes, take a look at their page, See if you're interested in everything. To the best of my knowledge, and I'll confirm this with Lana, I think her products are only in New York City. And I know that they were just in Times Square recently. So definitely make it a point to check it out and check her out. Obviously, Lana is one of the finest people that I know. Um, Products are absolutely amazing. Shout out to Jen Graziano. Thank you so much for doing Mob Wives and producing it and bringing that form of entertainment into our homes on a weekly basis. Because I, for one, can tell you that I personally absolutely love it and enjoy it. So thank you. Um, Okay. Save the best for last. Um, obviously, one more reminder on the truffle update. I got 50 more bags I got to get rid of. I think I've just sold like five online, so 44, 44, 45 more bags. I hosted Carrie Cody, local musician, on my show about a week ago. Absolutely fabulous interview. Um, and at the end of it, I surprised her because she has a dear friend that passed, and my BFF, of course, has stage four lung cancer. So, as you know, if you know me, you know that I've been trying and busting my ass literally to make a difference to him. And so this was my way of doing so. So I basically used my truffle business, and I've been producing, mass-producing truffles and selling them, and we're taking the profits from this particular event, and we're kicking it back to the American Lung Association here in Wisconsin in Becky's name, which is, of course, Carrie Cody's friend. So I'd appreciate it personally if any of you would just consider helping me out, getting rid of the rest of these 50 bags. I'd greatly appreciate that. That would be lovely. Um, If you want more information on that, like I said, email me or find me on Facebook. All right. So we saved the best for last. My son. Um, I know that some people find it unprofessional for me to talk about my child in a public forum, but it's my show. It's got my name on it, so I'm going to do it. My son. Um, To those that may not know or have an interest, I have a 10-year-old son who was diagnosed two years ago Um, the only diagnosis we have, which is frontal lobal seizure disorder. He has seizures that occur on the right side of his face. Everything on the left side of his face has been affected. In in two years now, we have been hospitalized more times than I could tell you. We've had a number of sleep deprivation EEGs. We've had every test on demand that I can think of. We've had medication changes. We've had side effects from medication. We've had all sorts of things go on. Um, and in, as many of you know, seizures are things that are obviously affecting the brain, which means now, as it stands at this point in time, I just want to tell you where we stand. Um, his father is very non-cooperative, so to speak, for lack of a better term. So now we're kind of at this point in time where he is going through a growth spurt. So everything changes at that point. We're looking at med changes, which means side effects to med changes. We're looking at he has an eight-hour neuropsychological test that he's going to be needing to take. We're also going to need to be uh, soliciting the help of a psychologist because I know that mentally um, he has some very serious issues with identifying the fact that he is not any longer sitting at the dumb table and that that persona is not there and that, you know, he's constantly asking me for medication to fix it or or to take away that whole feeling of I'm never going to get any better. Um, So we struggle with the psychological part of things. you know, so it's been a rough road. The the hardest part about this is, of course, when you're a radio show host and you have books out there and you have products out there, what no one realizes is that um, his life is my life and the, and the worse he gets, the worse I get, and it's been tumultuous. Um, so that's kind of where we stand right now. I'm very concerned. Um, all of the signs and symptoms that we're seeing lately would be indicative of potential long-range side effects from this. Um, And as a mother, I'm here to tell you I'm a very strong woman, but um, your child being altered permanently by something that you cannot control, I think is probably one of the hardest and most difficult things for me to deal with. Um, So I just wanted to let everybody know how he was doing. I wanted to say thank you so much for the many prayers and the thoughts and the good intentions and the moments where people listen to me when I'm crying when they let me write when I need to, 
when they don't ever say stop talking about him. From me to you, I just wanted to say how much I appreciate that and how much we appreciate that and how um, it makes a difference in our lives. And I surely do hope that uh, you'll continue to do so for a very long time. Um, Well, at this rate, probably two more years is what we're looking at. So I appreciate that. Um, So thanks very much. During the course of the show, the last thing I want to cover is, unfortunately, my guest for tomorrow is unable to come on the show, which means I get to spend this afternoon trying to figure out who wants to come on the program. So if anybody has a suggestion for me as far as who they want me to interview tomorrow, I guess i got a free day going on there. That would be lovely. Oh, wait, outside of therapy because I see a shrink because I'm going crazy. But that's at 1030, so we'll see. Uh, so if anybody's got any suggestions, email me, cin four two. 51 at gmail.com. If anybody wants to complain about the show today, email me. Anybody wants to tell me I did a great job, Facebook me. Uh, I don't know what else to say, folks. Hopefully, with any luck at all, you'll continue to be a follower since I know that a lot of you are listening for the first time due to Big Ant. And as I previously stated, please, please, please look online for the contest that I'm going to launch this afternoon um, to win the autographed bottles of wine with Big Ant, as far as that goes. Um, and then, of course, lastly, I want to mention, because I don't want to forget to promote, I have one more show after Thursday, which is this Friday. And Jeff Penny is his name. That's J-E-F-F-E, Penny, 11 o'clock Central Standard Time. He's another one of my lovely and talented Canadians. He's a Canadian musician. And as you know, I have one show where I do Canadians once a week. So please, please tune into that. And that's 11 o'clock on this Friday. Again, thanks so much to everybody that took the time to listen in and to orchestrate the show. Again, Jennifer, shout out to you. Shout out to Big Ann. She's no longer listening. Um, Fans, followers, you guys have yourself a wonderful afternoon. I'm off to go work. Thanks.